Everyone knew Sterling Moss was good by the time of the Italian Grand Prix of 1954, but this was a day he proved just how good he was. Sitting in third position in his privately entered Maserati, he waited while Ferrari's Alberto Ascari and Mercedes Juan Manuel Fangio, the two established stars of the day, tired each other out with their duel at the front, before brilliantly passing both and sailing off into a 20-second lead. He wouldn't, however, get his reward, as technical trouble forced him to retire. But in taking the fight to Fangio and Ascari, he'd done more than enough to encourage Mercedes to sign him for 1955. This was the day Moss shook up the status quo. Moss revered Fangio, saying he was happy and proud to be second to the best driver in the world when they were Mercedes teammates in 1955. But the following year, they were pitted against one another. Moss with Maserati, Fangio with Ferrari. The duo qualified first and second at Monaco, but it was Moss who got the jump at the start as an unusually ruffled Fangio spun. But Moss was in a class of his own, driving off into the distance and lapping everyone but Fangio. The maestro changed cars and roared back, but Moss, now nursing a damaged car after tangling with a back marker, calmly held on to win by six seconds. Moss had put the great Fangio to the sword. In 1957, Moss became the first British driver to win the British Grand Prix in a British car, but shared the honour with his Van Wall teammate, Tony Brooks. Moss led but pitted on lap 21 to try to cure a misfire. It didn't work, and the team switched him into Brooks's car. Resuming the race in ninth and a long way back, Moss went on an epic charge, breaking the lap record and inheriting the lead when Jean Bera's Maserati broke down and Mike Hawthorne hit the debris in his Ferrari, causing a puncture. Moss roared to victory as the crowd roared even louder on a feel-good day for British sport. Pescara was the longest Formula One circuit in history, and certainly one of the most dangerous, with Ferrari not even entering any cars into the race because of the risk. The course was a late addition to the calendar and a return to a bygone era of racing. At 15 miles long, it swept through hills and villages before returning to the seafront. And on it, Moss was in a class of his own. Dodging stone walls and telegraph poles by millimetres, he defeated the great Fangio by over three minutes to begin what would become a period of domination for British manufacturing in the top tier of motorsport. Moss became the first British winner of the British Grand Prix in 1955, dueling with his Mercedes teammate for the whole race and passing him at the finish line to win an epic 90-lap battle in front of 150,000 fans. Moss, who was the number two driver to Fangio and had led 80 of the 90 laps at Aintree, moved over for his teammate, who promptly hung back to ensure Moss claimed victory. The Argentinian legend simply telling him, it was your day. Mercedes had claimed the first four places, but first was the only one that mattered to the partisan crowd, whose hero had just made history. Moss won the opening round of the 1958 Formula One season in Argentina, with both the first F1 victory for a privateer team and the first win for a rear-engined car. With Van Wall choosing not to travel, Moss drove instead a Cooper Climax, the only car in the field that wasn't a Ferrari or a Maserati, and Moss himself was remarkably only cleared to race 30 minutes before the race start having worn bandages for 48 hours after being accidentally poked in the eye by his wife. But back in the sunlight, Moss didn't, or couldn't, blink. Using brilliant tactical nous and a touch of deception to beat his more powerful rivals. Overhauling home hero Fangio on the 35th lap and staving off the challenge of Luigi Musso and Mike Hawthorne to the flag on worn tyres. Moss's lighter car meant he didn't have to pit for a new set of tyres, while his rivals did. A new era had begun. Moss was at the peak of his powers in 1961 and showed he could make the impossible possible at the Nürburgring. A decision to race on wet tyres, despite the changeable conditions and a dry race start, 
was key as he held off the chasing Ferraris of Phil Hill and Wolfgang von Trips. He had no right to be in the lead given a disadvantage of 30 brake horsepower, but his mastery of the conditions and the softer wet tyres giving him the advantage through the corners saw him take victory by 20 seconds on the ultimate driver's circuit. It would be Moss's last Grand Prix win, but what a win it was. Three months earlier, Moss won the Monaco Grand Prix for a third time in one of the all-time great drives, again fending off the more powerful Ferraris. The shark-nosed stallions of Formula One's new one-and-a-half-litre V6 era. Moss had taken pole position in his tiny four-cylinder Lotus, and after retaking the lead was determined to hold on to it through gritted teeth, despite the looming presence of Phil Hill and Richie Ginther. The immense tussle between Moss, who'd removed the side panels on his car to aid cooling, and Ginther over the last 25 laps saw both of them dip under their qualifying lap times by three seconds as they pursued perfection. Moss said the 100-lap race was the hardest of his life and the one he considered his best. A golden year for the man called Mr. Motor Racing reached its peak when he won the epic 1,000-mile Mille Miglia road race between Brescia and Rome in 1955. Driving the iconic Mercedes-Benz 300 SLR at an unimaginable average speed of nearly 100 miles an hour on public roads for more than 10 hours, both Moss and co-driver Dennis Jenkinson shattered all the records with an astonishing feat of intelligence, meticulous preparation, bravery, skill and concentration. Moss later admitted it was the only time in his career where he'd been frightened, but the performance stands today as perhaps the greatest pure driving achievement of all time. Sterling Moss's fame of being the best driver never to win the World Championship was one he would come to embrace. But if it hadn't been for a great act of sportsmanship at the 1958 Portuguese Grand Prix, the story would have been very different. Moss won the race, but behind him, Ferrari's Mike Hawthorne had been accused of driving the wrong way on the track and faced disqualification. Moss, however, stood up for his friend and title rival, meaning Hawthorne kept second place and the six championship points that went with it. At the final round in Morocco, one marred by the tragic death of Stuart Lewis Evans, Moss had to win and set the fastest lap, and then hope Hawthorne finished third or worse. Moss did everything he could and kept his end of the bargain with another out-of-this-world performance. But Hawthorne did exactly what he needed to and won the title by just a single point. Enzo Ferrari remarked that Moss should have put reason before passion to take his deserved win. But Moss rejected that idea, questioning what it truly meant to be a winner. Sterling Moss self-proclaimed that he was a racer, not a driver with careful distinction. As such, he will be remembered forever as one of the greatest racers who ever lived.